Users can swipe our cards left or right to mark them as being guessed correctly or not. But there's no visual distinction between the two directions. Borrowing controls from dating apps like Tinder, we're going to make swiping right good. They guessed the answer correctly. And swiping left bad, they were wrong. We'll solve this problem in two ways. For a phone with default settings, we're going to make the cards become colored green or red before fading away. But if the user enabled the differentiate without color setting, we'll leave the cards as white and instead show some extra UI over our background. Let's start with the first pass on the cards themselves. Right now, our card view is made with a background in place. Over here in our card view, we have this sort of card background with a white fill and that 10 point radius shadow. Now we're gonna replace this with some more advanced code. We'll give it a background of the same rounded rectangle, except in green or red, depending on the gesture movement. Then we'll make the white fill from above fade out as the drag movement gets larger. First, the background. Before we have this shadow modifier here, I'm gonna apply a background color. So we'll say this has a background, and this will be a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 25 matching the one above it. And we'll fill this thing. If our offset width is greater than zero, we'll fill with green. Otherwise, we'll fill with red. So we have white here, and behind that, green or red. And now, here, corner radius, sorry, not corner size. For the white fill opacity, this is gonna be similar to the opacity modifier we added previously, except we're gonna use one minus 1 50th of gesture width, rather than two minus gesture width. This creates a really nice effect. We used two minus earlier, because it meant the card would have to move at least 50 points for fading away. But for the card color, we're gonna use one minus, so it starts becoming colored straight away. So, we'll replace the existing fill modifier with a little bit more code. So we've got white here, we'll give this thing an opacity of one minus the double the abs of offset dot width divided by 50. So the same thing we had earlier on for the opacity down here, except now it's one minus rather than two minus, so it starts coloring sooner. So, with that in place, go ahead and press Command R. We should now see the card blend from white to either red or green and then start to fade out. So I'll drag to the leftwards. You see it becomes red and then fades out. Going the other way, it becomes green and then fades out. So you can see it immediately wrong or right. Much clearer hint without being faded out. And when we get further away, it start to actually trigger the fade out like that. However, as nice as our code is, it won't work well for folks with red-green color blindness. They'll see the brightness of the cards change a little bit, but it won't be clear which side is which. To fix this, we're gonna add an environment property to track whether we should be using color for this purpose or not, and then disable the red-green effect when that property is true. So we'll start adding a new property to our card view before the existing properties up here. We have at environment, backslash dot, accessibility, differentiate without color. Like so. I'll do var and just paste it on in. And now we can use that for both the fill and background for our rounded rectangle to make sure we fade out the white smoothly. Now it's important we use it for both because the card fades out, the background color will start to bleed through the fill. And to replace our current round rectangle code, this one here, with something slightly different. We'll say here, we're filling this thing, if we have uh, accessibility to differentiate that color enabled, then we'll use white. Otherwise, we'll use white with the opacity in place. And then for the background, if we happen to have, again, differentiate without color turned on, so accessibility, differentiate without color, Boom, like that. If we have that turned on, then our background is going to actually be nil. There is no background. Otherwise, 
rather direct, filled with the green and red color like that. And then our shadow radius. And so when we have a default configuration, our cards are going to fade from green to red. But when we have differentiate without color enabled, then it won't be used. Instead, we want to provide some extra UI in Content View to make it clear which side's positive and which is negative. Now, earlier we made a very particular structure of stacks in our Content View. We had a Z stack, then a V stack, then another Z stack. And that first Z stack, the outermost one, allows us to have our background and card stack overlapping. But we're also going to use this to put some buttons in that stack so users can clearly see which side is good. First things first, we add the same property, uh, this one here, differential other color, boom, copy that and paste into content view so we can read that value there as well, boom. And now we're gonna add some new views directly after this V stack. This V stack here, leave it in place, directly after it, that's where we add our extra UI. We're gonna say, if we are in accessibility to French color mode, make another V stack. And this is gonna contain a spacer, then a H stack here with the image of system name X mark dot circle. So clearly the wrong side of things. I give this thing a little bit of padding and a nice background color will do dot black dot opacity 0.7. Then a clip shape of dot circle. Then a spacer. And on the other side, the, the good side, I'm going to copy and paste this image, like so. Uh, this thing here, this time will be a check mark dot circle, because it's the good side of things, but same padding, same background, and same clip shape. Now, this whole HDAC is going to be given a foreground style of white, a font of large title, and a little bit of padding so it doesn't quite go edge to edge. So here as you can see, we're making an extra V stack, this time starting with a spacer, so it's gonna push all the images that in the stack to the very bottom of the screen. And with a condition wrapped around the whole thing, this will only appear when differentiate the color is enabled. So most of the time our UA stay, UI stays as it was. Let's press Command R, run the sim and see how it looks. Here it is. Uh, there's uh, yes and no enabled. If we go to our uh, environment overrides, we can toggle that on or off. So here, let's say it, uh, enable overrides. Uh, and see it's now overriding it correctly. It's on, it's off like that. So it's showing them correctly. And, and handling it for us very, very nicely. Now, all this extra work matters. It really makes sure that every user gets a great experience regardless of their access needs. And that's what we should always be aiming for.